Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Mantra Chaudhary. I am a PhD scholar in Department of Civil Engineering, IIT Guwahati. Today, my talk will be on emerging contaminants in wetland ecosystem, especially focused on microplastics. This is going to be my presentation outline for today. First, I'll start with the introduction. Second, the evidence of omnipresence of microplastic in the entire world, the problem status quo as in the wetlands, the biomarkers, the mitigation strategy, and I'll end with the way forward. Plastic pollutants are divided into four parts according to their sizes, macro, meso, micro, mini micro. Today, I'll mainly focus on the micro part as in the microplastic, which is having size less than five millimeter. According to National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, microplastics are defined as plastic particles which are smaller than 5 mm in diameter. Mainly microplastics are divided into two parts, the primary and the secondary. The primary being the industrial products, microbreeds, personal care products and makeup and paints. The secondary microplastics are actually fragmented form of macroplastic that is the bigger plastics discarded into the environment. The processes involved in creation of microplastics from the bigger portions to the smaller portions. Actually, the first one, the physical processes such as surface abrasion, current and tidal effect. The second one is chemical processes such as photocatalysis and the presence of sunlight. There are different types of microplastics which we can see in the ecosystem. The few of being fibers, pallets, films, fragments, foam and microbeads. And in the coming slide, I'll explain from where these different kind of microplastics are originated from, basically what their sources are. The most common type of microplastics are actually fibers. These fibers are coming from synthetic textiles and whenever we wash our synthetic textile or synthetic dresses, clothes, we give off these particular fibers into the ecosystems. The other type of microplastic which we can see in the environment is actually fragment films and foams. We can easily find them into river banks, beaches, even wetlands near wetlands where anthropogenic activities are so much. Microbeads are also a type of microplastic which are industrially made for their smaller sizes, which we can easily find in uh, different kind of products such as face wash, scrubbers, and even toothpastes. Coming on to the next part of microplastic evidence of omnipresence. Omnipresence, that means it is present everywhere. So the recent studies have found that this microplastic is everywhere, such as in our table salt, the drinking water we take, the air we breathe in, the fish which we eat in plankton, in wetlands, and even in the Arctic ice also, where anthropogenic activities are very limited. Right now, we don't have data for microplastic which are going into the wetlands globally, but we have the close data, uh, close enough data for uh, microplastic which are going into the world oceans. A 2017 study of United Nations Environmental Program concluded that around 1.5 million tons of microplastic enter ocean every year. And India today produces more than 25,000 tons of plastic waste daily, out of which only 10,000 tons goes into the landfill. The rest are casually discarded. In this picture, we can see the global plastic distribution pattern. With the increase in plastic production, we have managed to mismanage the plastic waste also. As of 2010, we are looking at around 300 million tons of plastic waste, which is mismanaged. Among the plethora of impacts of microplastic, which we can see in the environment, I've picked a few. Changing properties of ecosystem, ingestion by animals, adsorption of toxins, vectors for harmful pathogens. These are the impacts for microplastics. In the middle, you can see there is a uh, plankton which is having microplastic lodged inside its body. So we can understand the gravity of the situation. Even the minute plankton is having microplastic ingested inside its body. Continuing the impacts of microplastic, uh, the zooplankton and uh, the shear water birds are having ingested microplastic inside its body. The impacts of microplastics are there in freshwater ecosystem dwellers also, and it's equally lethal. The microplastic can run up the chain from subcellular 
cellular, individual and ecosystem level. It can move up the chain or bioaccumulate from the smaller fish to the bigger fish. The impacts of microplastic in soil are also profound. The primary microplastic and secondary microplastic are equally responsible for contamination of soil. Primary microplastic through wastewater treatment plants goes into the land application and ultimately comes back to the soil. The secondary microplastic such as synthetic textiles and fibers such as tires, wires and tears goes into the atmospheric deposition and comes back to the soil. A washing machine effluent on the other hand uh, because we wash the synthetic textiles it can give up fibers back into the soil. The impacts of microplastic in wetlands the first microplastic uh, starts its journey from aquaculture waste or industrial production and through runoff it goes back into the wetlands. The macroplastics, the bigger size plastics uh, with the help of solar radiation goes into fragmentation and degradation and becomes microplastic and ultimately it gets ingested into the wetland dwellers. The human exposure element of microplastic also need to be considered over here. The exposure of uh, microplastic goes through different routes such as inhalation, ingestion of dust, daily intake of polluted food such as uh, contaminated fish, water. So these are the major ways which uh, through which microplastic burdens our body. The most common biota that are affected by microplastics are actually fish larvas, toads, prawns, turtles, the main factors that influence the physical impact of microplastic in aquatic organisms are actually the source of microplastic, accumulation, transportation or translocation of microplastic, shapes, ingestion capacity of aquatic organisms and the population level. The subsequent impact of consuming plastic fragments for uh, aquatic biota are the blockage of feeding appendages, enzyme production or enzyme production disruption, nutrient dilution, low steroid hormone levels, delayed ovulation, reproductive failure, and hindering the food passage through the intestinal tract, and even the reduction in food intake also. The most common type of microplastics are found in freshwater ecosystem are there in these pictures. A microplastic found in the gastrointestinal tract of fish, representing the most abundant polymer types such as polyethylene, polypropylene, rayon, polyester, polyacrylonitrile, and nylon. In a certain aquatic uh, system, how can we know and how can we quantify the concentration of microplastic? These affected ones can be considered as biomarkers, uh, which can help us to identify, quantify, and get to know the fate of microplastic. The biomarkers such as fish, crabs, and freshwater organisms. Now what can be the solution for it? Uh, the mitigation strategy what we can follow is we can ask for strict laws. Uh, the laws are there for uh, banning the single usage of plastic. Okay. And uh, on the other side, uh, there are microbead ban on the personal care products also. But still we can ask for more stricter legislature. Reduction at source is uh, very much rudimentary because after creating a problem, we cannot always search for solutions. Uh, the main thing and the rudimentary thing would be uh, to uh, solve the problem at source. We should always practice the sustainable living part. As an example, uh, we can discard the single usage uh, of uh, the drinking water bottles and we can always use the steel water bottles or other bottles which are sustainable. Community awareness is another aspect what we can uh, what we can tap for actually because the mismanagement of plastic can only be uh, only be solved by the community awareness. Alternative solutions are uh, already there in the market but still we hesitate to use it such as uh, biodegradable plastics and which are not very popular of a solution also. We should totally look into this alternative solution so that we can mitigate this uh, menace which we have created as, as a form of microplastic. 
So at the end, the way forward uh, of this particular talk would be to conduct a regular community cleanup campaign and if possible, the quantification of plastic and microplastic part, uh, the conscious choices in acquiring products, uh, acquiring uh, products which are not plastic, the plastic production reduction, uh, which, which again, we can only do by our conscious choices so that we don't uh, produce more plastic products. And at the end, the plastic waste management through community, uh, through community power, community awareness. These are few of the general papers which I referred for this particular talk. Thank you everyone for listening to me and thank you for your time. And I would like to extend my special thanks to the organizers of Adrita Adrabhumi for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much.